I just set this whole thing up and realized I only have one tripod. Well, that's pretty nice. I hope there's not gonna be too much tape noise. The problem though is now I don't have anywhere to hold this. I think we'll just have to make do. Today, the reason that I'm having to do craziness with my microphone is because we're going to be doing a reaction video. When I told my wife that I was going to start trying to do some more reaction videos or stuff like that, she's like, oh, you'd probably be good at that, but you're too nice. So, Stefan, we're going to be reacting to your video today. I'm sorry if I'm not nice. It's my wife's fault. That's healthy, right? Probably not. So here's how all this started. About a month ago now, I actually got a really long email that luckily wasn't from Amazon because whenever I get one of those, I freak out. Also, you're on a swivel table, so that's why we're moving all like this. And if this is your first time here and you're like, first off, this guy's weird. Second off, what is the space that he's in? It's actually a van because I live in a van. So this is my house. Okay, we're actually gonna put you over here because we're not on a level surface. So the big long email I got was actually from someone who I had seen comments on a few of my videos before and actually gave me one of my favorite comments that I ever got while I was building out this van and not posting videos for a month and a half. It's a pretty good comment, right? It's pretty cool. And the email is actually about a video that he was making that he was wondering if I wanted to be featured on. And I don't get a lot of those requests, obviously. So I said, yes. And if you have a video that you're working on and you want to collab, definitely hit me up. But we're not just reacting this because I'm in the video, even though that's actually not that important. But the main reason is it's actually a pretty interesting concept. Stefan's 15 years old. If you haven't seen the video before, I'm just going to pull up retail arbitrage on YouTube to see if it comes up because it's been coming up over the past couple days. Yeah, right here. Oh, he's got 1,300 views. Good job, bro. 247 subscribers right now. Definitely go subscribe to his channel and check out that video. He tried Amazon retail arbitrage for 30 days. He actually tried some other things first, but he decided to quit. Let me show you how I was able to open a successful Amazon FBA store that generated over $4,000 in revenue in the first 30 days. Okay, already $4,000 in the first 30 days. Let me see what I did my first 30 days on Amazon. Let's head over into my Seller Central real quick. I think I got my first sale September of 2020. Did I beat him? I think he got me, honestly. Oh no! Thirty-five ninety-seven. So pretty close. So if you're like getting into FBA, you kind of want to take it a little bit seriously. What was his? Over four thousand dollars in revenue in the first thirty days while only using my bike. Okay, let's be real. That's a cheater bike. Are you pedaling all the time? I don't think so. But I'll let it slide this time, Stefan. Bike. And let me tell you how you could do the exact same thing. I'm not lying, and I'll break down all the numbers later in the video. Stefan, this is directly to you, bro. That line. The I'm not lying, and I'll explain everything. What was it exactly? I'm not lying, and I'll break down all the numbers later in the video. <laughs> I'm not lying, but I'll break down all the numbers later in the video. Why would I think you were lying, Stefan? So because you beat me in sales? Because that's not cool. At 15 years old, he beat me in sales. I, I didn't I didn't check that before I started this video. I'm honestly a little bit salty. But let me also tell you why I think that you shouldn't do this. Interesting. This all started a little more than a month ago when I was watching YouTube and came across a video where a person talked about... That's not me. That's okay. ...from Walmart to Amazon successfully. If you don't know what dropshipping is, it's where you find an item on a website like Walmart that costs, for example, $2.98. Then you find that same item on a website like Amazon and sell that item on Amazon for more than what you can buy it for on Walmart. In this example, let's say $14.99. Then once someone buys your item from Amazon, you go to Walmart and buy it directly to the Amazon buyer's address. All you have probably online, not at Walmart, because you can't really buy something at Walmart to their address. Actively do is find the products and keep the difference when someone buys. Mm. This is mostly correct. The concept's definitely correct, and this graphic makes it look much easier to understand, but $14.99 minus $2.98 is the cost at Walmart. Doesn't subtract out any of like the Amazon fees or anything. So if you're watching this video and you haven't done Amazon before, it's not that simple. It's not like, oh, Amazon gets $15, they just pass all of that on to you. They're definitely gonna take their cut, especially if you do Amazon FBA. This would be fulfilled by merchant, so the fees will be a little bit less, but it's still not good. And drop shipping, you can't do on Amazon FBA. And he does mention that, and I think in a second. This immediately intrigued me, but after doing more research, I discovered that dropshipping is against Amazon's terms of service. So that Don't ruled out any chance of me trying it. I was still Don't intrigued by this idea and found out that if I bought the item from Walmart, sent it to myself, then sent it to the customer, that it was perfectly legal based off of Amazon's terms of service. Yes, for the most part. You could definitely do it. There's people, that's online arbitrage where you buy something online, get it sent to your house, you send it to Amazon. You can also get it set to like prep centers who actually do all that fulfillment work for you as long as it's still profitable enough. And that's something I'm interested in looking into since I live in a freaking van. But there are a lot of restrictions that go into it. I don't know if he touches on them in this video, but for instance, like food stuff, you're not automatically gonna be able to sell. Amazon needs to start to trust you to sell other things. So you'll probably only be able to start selling a couple different categories. I have a video, I think coming out later this month. Oh, today's the first day of 31 days of uploads. Welcome to Vlogmas. I don't think I'm gonna 
to call it vlogmas because they're not all vlogs but i'll be uploading every day in december so definitely subscribe if you want to stay tuned for all of those but you can get on gated and stuff relatively quickly or if you want to be like me only got auto engaged and stuff i didn't actually get any supplier invoices in order to get on gated and stuff but that's a whole big other topic so no it's not necessarily against the seller code of conduct but it can be a little bit hard to do especially in the beginning but it's definitely possible as is evidenced by me and by what we'll see here in this video knowing that if i could find one or two good products i could make thousands of dollars i spent a few <sighs> one or two good product you can make thousands of dollars is kind of not a pipe dream but very 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 hard might be one of the reasons why you didn't want to continue doing retail arbitrage because retail arbitrage it's almost impossible to do that because your stores are going to get replenished with inventory you're gonna have to wait on them to get replenished that's what i was waiting on so much in orlando is oh i would buy so much crap but then i'd have to wait for the stores to get more inventory before i could buy more inventory because i will have sold all the stuff that i'm possibly able to from those same stores online it's a little bit different because they'll be able to just ship it to you but if you're specifically doing retail arbitrage which is what this video is about, which is what I mainly do. You're going into stores, buying stuff, setting it into Amazon. You're going to be capped out on specific products. Today, I shot two videos doing retail arbitrage and I was able to find some stuff in a Marshalls that I sold out of before, but I was only able to get 15 units of it the first time. I'm only able to get 20 units of it now. And those 35 units will make me $200 or so, but I sold like 10 in one day and I can't just sell 10 in a day over and over and over and over again because I don't have access to that inventory. Sorry, I'm looking over there. There's a guy who was really close to my van. I was searching manually with no luck. Then I remembered that I can code in Python. So I spent. <laughs> it's so nonchalant. It's like. Then I remembered I could code in Python. Then I remembered I'm really freaking smart. Really cool that you could do that. I definitely get to do that in mad respect. It's just really funny the way that that hit my ears. Let's hear it one more time. Then I remembered that I can code in Python. <laughs> oh man, I love that so much. I wish I could code in Python. So I spent the next two or three weeks every day writing software that will compare Amazon and Walmart prices to find profitable products. Long story short, the software worked, but I never ended up using it. Somewhere along the way, when I was that's interesting if the software worked why didn't you use it do you not want to make money you can just send me the products if you want i mean i'll buy them if they're really profitable enough now i think he's gonna get into it. i see this the freest frame is on a reezy resells frame and he's how i started learning a little bit about amazon fba instead of just like general reselling so i think we're getting into my game retail arbitrage i came across a video from the channel reezy resells his videos introduced the concept of retail arbitrage to me this is Wait a second. Just this transition was pretty clean. Right here, he's working on the computer. You see this little button right up here? That little circle with the square inside of it? It's on my computer. I don't know if you could see it as well. It's because I'm screen recording. And so he took the screen recording, took this footage that he's editing, mashed it together, and then all oh, right there. Can I go back frame by frame? Yeah. This is clean. You almost can't tell. Real footage, real footage, real footage, real footage, real footage. Watch for this to go away. Real, 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 real. Boom. Right there. That's the transition. That's a clean cut, man. His videos introduced the concept of retail arbitrage to me. Big enough difference from retail store price to Amazon price to where you can make a decent profit. I was actually on Okay. This is where I have a little bit of an issue. I don't think you'd be able to make any profit on $8 Harry's product, especially at $14.85. I think the fees would be too much. I understand that for the basis of this video and like it's easiest to see, but I think that there could have potentially been a better product to showcase. But at the same time, I understand you might not want to show your products. I tend to show products way more than I probably should. Even if I don't show like very, very specific things, you could watch through all my videos and probably find every single product that I sell, to be honest with you. But uh, let's see if I could find this Harry's product real quick. Okay, Harry men's razor with two razors. I'm gonna go head over to an inventory lab real quick. The software that I use. Razor? Is that it? With two? Nope. Not that. Oh, it's right here. Navy blue, different color. What's the price? $18.99. Okay, so that's actually... Hmm. I should start looking for this, maybe. That's actually not crazy. $18.99, $19. You get back $12.41. I actually would pick that up if it was $7.99, like he has in his video here, because that $7.99 to $12.41 is over 50% ROI. But if we drop this down to $14.99, I mean, you're making $0.46. Cents. Don't ever pick that up. I would choose a different product, but overall, concept understood, locked and loaded. Let's move on. Vacation in Florida when I found out about this concept. So I spent the next multiple days watching videos about retail arbitrage on YouTube from other creators. Dude, that's still not me. Okay, calm down. Calm down. It's okay. It doesn't have to be you, Anthony. It's not about you. Oh, actually, I didn't see this until just now. This is me right here. That video. Look at that. Go watch it over here if you want to. I'm being really narcissistic right now. Also, I really like this shot, too the glow that backlit shot good job i needed to start like apps and software such as inventory labs and keep up when i got home from florida i went into target and started scanning but with no luck i found something so did you buy it that looks like it's in your house the harry's did you s i'm confused did you actually buy that to send in actually that one looks like it's blue so it might be the one that we looked at that would actually be profitable sneaky i like it I had profit, but all of which I wasn't allowed to sell. I called it a day and went out. Yes, that's gating. He does get to it. Gating sucks. I hate when I find something that I can't sell and 
then I can't sell it, and then I don't make that money. <laughs> that was not worth pausing the video for. The next day I tried Marshalls and struck gold, or so I thought. I found these Hydro Peak water bottles that Let's listen to what he said one more time, because this confuses me and still to this day. Next day I tried Marshalls and struck gold, or so I thought. I found these Hydro Peak water- He said, I struck gold, or so I thought. Stefan, maybe you could tell us. Like, why did he not strike gold? Because it seems like he made money on those. I don't know. Also, these Hydro Peak things, I've only ever found one that's been profitable, and I've scanned hundreds of them. If you can find those that are profitable, all props to you, but I have not been able to find them. Bottles that were selling on Marshalls for $12.99, and on Amazon for $39.99. That's nice. I bought nice. every single bottle that they that's had gonna on That's going to be over 100%. Shelf, and I continue to find more products like this throughout the following day. Yeah, so like, you made $216 without fees, but like- Wait, without fees? Two, four, six. Yeah, that's definitely without fees. So with fees, it's probably like 90 to 120 because the fees on those water bottles are pretty hefty. It's probably like 10 to $15 per water bottle. But like, why did you not strike gold? I'm so confused. On Amazon, you're restricted to sell in a lot of categories when you start off as a new seller. And this was a big problem that I was facing. Okay, so we're going to skip a little bit of this because I've seen it before. I'm just going to summarize essentially what happens. And you can go watch his video to find out specifically. He signs up for something that's $1,000 that is going to get him ungated and stuff. And it doesn't get him ungated. Luckily, he gets his money refunded. He starts to make some sales on Amazon because the shipment gets in. He joins a bolo group, which stands for be on the lookout and tries to find stuff from there. And then he also gets ungated using Frontier Co-op, which is just a distributor that you can use to get ungated in topicals and grocery. And then even though I made fun of him for it earlier, like it's pretty sweet that he's on his hustle, like 15, can't drive, obviously, at least not legally, so don't drive. But he's got his electric bike and he's able to go to Marshall's after school. I also every day after school, which is pretty sick, to be honest, especially to be like doing that to make some money. I respect it a lot. Finds a bunch of items that he sells in the same day. I'm not going to show that item specifically because you can go watch his video if you want to see what it is because he does show what it is. This also leads me to the first replenishable product that I found. That I Replenishables. Let's talk about that for a second. I have a video coming out on this on either this Friday or next Friday. I forget exactly when I have that video coming out, but I'm going to talk about how I found replenishables and it's a little bit different than the way that he did, except I'm pretty interested in doing stuff the way that he actually found this replenishable item. So if you want to check that out, go and watch his video. We'll get into all those tips at the end of the week. So subscribe for that video. The issue with retail arbitrage trust for me is scalability you have to put time to go out and source to make money it's yeah, that's definitely true. Retail arbitrage is harder to scale. Definitely not impossible. More of the scale comes on scaling back time than it does on scaling up profits, which is the nice thing about retail arbitrage. The more that I've done it, the more I've learned about how to do it efficiently. And so today I spent three hours and like 20 minutes total sourcing and I sourced like 500 something dollars worth of profit at a 70 to 80% return on investment, which is hard to do when you're not doing retail arbitrage because it's harder to find higher return on investment items. You normally will find 30 to 50% from what I've heard. Being able to spend less money at a higher ROI and being able to find more and more stuff as you get ungated and more because you sell more is really helpful part about retail arbitrage. And so if you're looking at scaling up your Amazon business in terms of money, I definitely agree. Retail arbitrage is probably not ultimately the way to go. It's a good way to supplement it and it's a fun thing to do anyways, but online arbitrage, wholesale, private label, those can be good ways on Amazon. Personally, I don't want to scale my Amazon business super big. I want to scale back my time in Amazon so I can do other things that I enjoy, which is mostly making YouTube videos and spending time traveling and being with my wife. So those are kind of the two differences in scalability, scaling up money, scaling down time, both of which will leave you with more freedom in your life. Just a matter of where you need or want that freedom right now. Not a get rich quick scheme or even a get rich scheme. In other words, the amount of money you make is proportional to the amount of time that you put in. I prefer something that I can simply put time into once and maintain for an hour a week afterwards that brings me passive income. Don't we all, but that's really infeasible especially as I've gotten into the real world and realized a lot of things about money and time. It's not the easiest thing in the world to actually make all that money without putting in a lot of effort. It's definitely possible, but it's going to take a lot of upfront time. And so quitting something after 30 days in order to find something that you'll only be able to work at an hour a week is a little less feasible than I would like to believe. But I was also this optimistic when I was 15 and I just might not have done things correctly. I don't think that's the case. I think that I'm right, but I I'm here to be proven wrong. Thinking of starting a retail arbitrage store, you should- Oh my gosh, that's me. This was in New York City, which was dope, by the way. We were able to park there for free. If you're thinking of starting a retail arbitrage store, you should know that this is a business strategy that does require some real upfront work from you. It does. In all seriousness, this is Anthony. And if you're looking that's to me. start your own retail arbitrage store, I would start off from his YouTube channel. I mean, I don't disagree. Help me get off the ground in the description. But let's uh see what ended up happening over the course of his month. And it's pretty cool that he breaks it down in terms of per hour after fees and like all that stuff i'm not going to spoil the overall total so that you'll go over and check out his video but we'll walk through most of the fees and numbers how much money i made the simplest possible way to break down my profit would be the following my revenue my cost of goods 
my fulfillment, my Amazon fees, and my selling fees. And one question that I have for your cost of goods, is that the cost of goods of everything that sold or is it the cost of goods of everything that you spent? Basically a cash versus accrual basis because normally unless you buy like the perfect amount of inventory always, you're going to have a flow inventory that just sits at Amazon that like will sell out and trickle over time. Some of it will have to get rid of. Profited over $1,000. These numbers put us at a 75% return on investment. 75 is honestly pretty good. I think that's higher than mine. I think mine stays closer to 40, 50, 60% ROI. That is though because a lot of stuff that I have has been sitting at Amazon for six months and since this is the first month, it doesn't happen nearly as much. Let me go look at my first month and see what the difference is. But what I was going to say is as you have stuff that just sits at Amazon longer and longer, you're going to have to start selling stuff for way less ROI just to get that money back so you can cycle it back into more inventory, which is a good thing actually, but it really drags down your ROI. So if we go back to my first month selling September, 2020, net profit, 789.34, $250 less than him. My cost of goods sold. Oh, no way. 831.93. I beat you at something. Yes! You sold more than me, you made more profit than me, but my ROI was better. 95%? That's freaking good! Let's go! I'm happy now, we can go back to the video. Not take into account a lot of expenses that other YouTubers don't show. On Bing subscriptions, they will completely kill your profit. They won't kill your profit. I don't necessarily agree with that. I agree that they will drop your numbers so that you can't flex as much saying, I made $1,000 of profit, but I would be making way less if I didn't have the subscriptions I have because I wouldn't have my repricer be cool. All these are linked in the description, by the way, if you want to support the channel and check them out and get extra free Trials. But I wouldn't have Be Cool, which reprices my inventory, which means that I'm more competitive and sell more, which means I get more money back so I can cycle it back through more inventory. And I wouldn't have Inventory Lab, which means that I wouldn't actually be able to source as fast as I do. I wouldn't be able to list as fast as I do. I'd be wasting a lot more time. So they definitely eat into your show profits, trying to show off how much profit you made. But I do think that overall you make more profits because you have them. So he's got $330 total of expenses, brings him down from a 75 to a 53% ROI. And if I was to do that with my first month, I'd probably be sitting pretty similar, especially because I had to spend like a hundred bucks on a printer and get a bunch of other stuff like that. Next though, he's going to get into time. And this is something that I don't see a ton of people necessarily talking about because what he's going to represent is interesting and it's definitely valid. But the more you do it, like I said, and when we're talking about that scalability thing, you're able to scale back that time. So your profit might not go up a ton, but your profit per hour will. And so if you source the same amount of hours, your profit will go up a ton. I try to send in about three to $4,000 of potential profit every single month into Amazon. I'm spending less and less time doing that. So I'm able to buy back my time to build my other businesses, which is the reason I got into But if I was to spend the same amount of time doing it, I would have more and more profits in my Amazon business. I just think that my time is better spent making money elsewhere because it'll build me more money over the long term. But but let's see what he has to say about his. I think it's safe to make a generous bet that I spent around 60 to 70 hours working on this. From packing shipments to setting up software. In a month? That's honestly not crazy. It's like 15, 20 dollars like an hour. of time that you might say you don't have. I personally have spent over 53 hours in the last month on TikTok. So let's say. Embarrassing. Let's not look at what mine was. I don't TikTok actually. I've started limiting my TikTok. If you would have asked me like two months ago, mine would be insane too. But I started limiting it 10 minutes a day and my wife has my password for my phone. So she has to put it in if I need to do anymore so luckily over the past week instagram i have three and a half hours so that's not good and that's not even just for posting that's just for having it tiktok's only 24 minutes so freaking killing it put that restriction on your phone but his point that you have time definitely rings true for most people some people it's not feasible especially if you're working and trying to quit your job and have a family and stuff it's just about priorities i'm not telling you that this has to be a priority but you can make it a priority if you want to more than likely I spent 65 hours doing all of this work, which would make it to $11.4 an hour. That's not that great. If we take out the price of subscription- Not great. 11.40 an hour is not great, but for a part-time job, it's not like the worst. And for a part-time job that you can do essentially whenever, that's really not bad. You have flexible hours, $11.40 an hour. I think most part-times, hopefully the rates will increase, but I think it's $13 to $15 an hour for good part-time jobs. Starting is probably like closer to 10, 11, depending on where you live. Right before his conclusion, he just touches back on him spending almost $1,000 on getting on gated and that might have caused him to lose money and then this is his conclusion which i don't fully agree with it. i don't fully agree if you're looking to get unrestricted there's definitely a way that you could make money with retail arbitrage true but there are different ways to make more money per hour of your time you also shouldn't true. be selling your time for a fixed hourly rate you should be spending your time finding things that will make you passive money like eh, should is a very powerful word could 
could choose to. But if you feel really comfortable just selling your time for money, especially if you get paid a good rate, that's great. If that funds your lifestyle and you're fine and you understand your finances and you are like, hey, I can work 40 years and retire and be comfortable, but it's a choice. Like, that's a great thing. I don't think you should be looking for passive income necessarily. It's definitely something you can do, but let's let him finish. You shouldn't be selling your time for a fixed hourly rate. You should be spending your time finding things that will make you passive money, like stocks, rental income, etc. Stocks, rental income, etc. All that isn't necessarily passive. Stocks, your trading is not passive. If you're investing, it's not really income until you decide to take money out of it. Rental income, I definitely think can be passive, especially if you hire someone to manage your property, do the maintenance work, but it's also not feasible for people to just be like, I'm not going to do retail arbitrage. I'm going to do either stocks or rental income because those both require a lot of money. And retail arbitrage, one of the things that's so beautiful about it is that you don't need a lot of money to start. You don't need a lot of time to start necessarily. More of those will obviously help you do a lot better sooner. I think that this can be definitely true for people who might have money, but people who don't have money, it's going to be a little bit harder. And maybe you can build yourself up to those places of having more passive income. But ultimately, it comes down to what I talked about in this video, which is understanding exactly what you want from it. Because I always get bogged down seeing other people who are making reselling content who are like selling a million a year. I'm like, oh, I should be doing that. I feel like a fraud because I'm not doing that. And I realize that's not why I do this or why I wanted to do this. But understand what you want. This consider subscribing button down here is not a consideration go subscribe to his channel. I'll have it linked up there. I'll have it linked down there. I love doing these reaction type videos. They're a lot of fun for me to make. Hopefully, as you could tell, hopefully it wasn't too annoying, but let me know what I should react to next. Send me like annoying stuff that you find about money, business, reselling. Send it to my Instagram at ambdnza or down to my email ambdanza.gmail.com or just comment it down below. And I would love to react to a lot more stuff, hopefully making it at least a weekly kind of thing. Stefan, thank you so much for letting me be a part of your video. While we're making this outro forever long, 31 videos in December. So if you want a video in December, I'm still planning the last half of the month. So let me know down in the comments what you want to see. Also pray for me so I can do this and have my sanity by the end of it. But subscribe to stay tuned for tomorrow's video. Watch Monday's video right here where I got kicked out of a store I was trying to resell or a really old reaction video that I did like a year and a half ago down here. But go watch Stefan's video if you haven't already clicked over and subscribed to his channel. Bye.